I've come to the conclusion that the guys running the RIAA, the MPAA, which stand for the Record Industry Association of America, and the Moving Pictures Association of America, are some of the lowest people out there. Because it's not only that they're immoral, greedy, lying people, it's that they're immoral, greedy, lying people that have power. I sound like I'm talking about a politician here or something. The RIAA was voted the most hated corporation in America. More hated than Halliburton, Microsoft, McDonald's, Exxon Mobil, you know, the big ones that people are always complaining about. Why? Because all the rest of the corporations are based on people's decisions. Because all the rest of the corporations, people make decisions, and then they get they get fat, or they get a computer that sometimes doesn't work or something. But the RIAA, what is its sole purpose in life? Its sole purpose in life is to sue people. Morals and laws, a lot of times, you can go by common sense. Does it feel wrong? As much as you could say, oh my god, it is wrong, and you don't think it feels wrong? Well, uh, does it feel wrong to go into somebody else's house, break in, knock down their door, and start taking their electronics and their in their food and papers and that is wrong that is obviously wrong and it feels wrong if you download a song or if you rip a song from a cd you bought and put it on your computer why is that illegal now how does the mpaa and the riaa sue people on what grounds the riaa lawsuits pit a number of very large recording companies against the individuals who have paid for an internet access account and that is only how it goes because they will sue whoever is paying for the account it doesn't matter if you're if you're in a network or if you're at starbucks they the the mpaa has sued people that run starbucks's because Starbucks gives you free internet in, within their uh, store. Truly, they don't have any good evidence that, say, a downloader has actually broken copyright in the first place. They might have an IP address. They might have... I mean, a lot of times, they're suing people that don't even know how to use a computer. John Tyrannian, he once represented the case of a terminally ill Mexican immigrant on welfare whose, who, whose son was targeted by the RIAA for illegally downloading music. The RIAA, in one case, sued a man, Mr. Scantleberry, who happened to die and was already dead. Dying is no excuse, and you need to pay up. And it's not just in America. This, this, this copyright mafia is all over the world. Uh, the car maintenance chain Quick Fix in the UK is tied up in a bitter legal battle with the UK Performing Rights Society, and they hold that Quick Fix should not be playing their radios within earshot of the public. They're demanding $200,000 in damages. No, wait, no, wait, 200,000 pounds. And a pound is more than a dollar. A pound is twice as much as a dollar. But the PRS is also forcing a charity to pay copyright fee so that their kids can sing Christmas carols. Because you know what? A lot of those songs you hear, like Happy Birthday, they're copyrighted. And you can't sing them without paying the company that owns the rights to it. We're in an age where it's legal for a company to patent pigs 
or any other organism or its genes, but copying a CD that you bought onto your own hard drive can be considered an infringement on somebody else's rights. We're living in a society in which you're hit with thousands of advertising messages every day and almost never with your permission. Creating a piece of art and putting it in public without the government's permission will land you in prison. Information is getting cheaper and more expensive at the same time. The Magna Carta was just bought $21 million, a bit of money. It's by far the most money anybody has ever paid for a page of text. And therefore in lies the paradox because the Magna Carta, you can go online and find that on the internet millions of times for free. It has been preserved photographically and digitally to the micrometer. And in that way, it will last as long as our civilization does. But in another way, it's not going to last very long. Because it's a little, it's a piece of paper. It's a piece of parchment, fragile and scarce and unreadable. The Magna Carta made a grant of rights to all free men irrevocably and forever, at least in theory. And the document did not just express that grant or represent it or certify it. It was the grant. But the value over 800 years later is a little bit different. It's kind of an illusion. That document is holy. It has this magical allure. Because you're buying the story behind it, you're not buying the piece of paper. If this guy hits a baseball out of out of the baseball field and you buy that baseball for two million dollars, if somebody finds out that's not that that's not the baseball he hit, that baseball is automatically worth two dollars. Because you didn't buy the baseball, you bought the story. But just as those professional quill wielders were paid to make copies of things. That $21 million piece of paper was a copy of a copy made in 1297. Now, I sound like I already started my history of information class, don't I? I didn't, but we're in the so-called information age, and people are in a scramble to find their information's worth. Uh, I guarantee you, if you watch the cast, your opinions on intellectual property, copyright, piracy, etc. will change no matter where you stand. So, thanks for watching, and I've got a pretty interesting video response coming up for this one about copyright in everyday life.